Hey guys, J77 here. Before I start off my list of movies that I've saw this year and parts of last year, um, I was asked countless times from friends of mine about my feelings towards Amazing Spider-Man. Um, basically because I kept quiet about it. Um, not that I wanted to keep quiet about it, but because of some, some personal matters. Um, I did a video on it, but it got encrypted. Uh, something happened that I was forced to erase the entire video. Uh, which is actually a good thing considering how long I took to actually talk about the movie um, and I never really got around to it because uh, my situation with my sister, me moving from Brooklyn to Manhattan um, and I just never really touched on this movie um, until now. Um, my feelings towards this movie may surprise a lot of people, um, it, it may, may even upset a lot of people but it has to be said uh, because of my overall feelings towards this movie. Um, I might as well tell you I was not impressed by this film at all. The Maiden Spider-Man was a major disappointment for me. Um, I was way over underwhelmed about some of the stuff that happened. Um, and um, after looking at it for a second time, because I did look at it again, and my feelings have, for the film have not um, changed. Um, was this a film that was a complete waste of time? No, there was actually some good things I actually liked they did. Um, pretty much how they told the origin story Spider-Man um, that pretty much gave it a more cemental value when they actually introduced for a short period of time um, his parents um, and how they actually done that. Um, his family got broken into. Um, you can tell somebody was looking for something very important but what that was we don't know. It has something to do with pretty much a um, particular species um, and that pretty much forced um, the Parkers to um, pretty much leave their son with Aunt May and Uncle Ben. Um, that was the last time we ever seen um, of them, um, but it was a very, very strong um, addition towards the origin story because really, they never really dived into um, their family. I think the only time they actually did is when he rebooted Spider-Man, I think the second time when he was like, a lot younger, and for some reason he had a sensei for an aunt. Um, you guys know what I'm talking about. It was one of the least respectable Spider-Man stories I ever read. Um, I tried to forget it, but in any case, um, that was really the only time um, they actually dove into parents. But in this case, they really dove into them as being um, scientists. Um, at least that's what you get from this story. And um, it pretty much, hit their departure pretty much affected Peter Parker going into his teenage youth. Um, I like the fact that they actually even changed how he got his inspiration to become Spider-Man because we always felt that he was a wrestler, he was trying to make some money. Uh, one of them was to impress the girl, another one was to try and get money for Aunt May and Uncle Ben. But in this case, um, it was a much more different feeling. And I think they handled it pretty well because the last thing I want to see is another wrestling match with them. Let me know he was in the ring. He didn't wrestle anybody. He actually looked at the wall and actually got the inspiration because uh, he was looking for Uncle Ben Killer, which I will say this was the most dumbest thing they ever have done in terms of killing him off. Um, I, I, I scratched my head into what the hell was Uncle Ben thinking trying to grab the gun from a guy who's obviously dangerous. Uh, but that played into the part of him not as much ta um, with great power but great responsibility which they try to rearrange the word. I think um, even um, some of the um, people who, um, who poke fun of continuity errors have um, pretty much addressed. Um, I guess they didn't want to try too much to be like the other film, but in to this point, you know what he was talking about. But um, in this case, he wasn't drawn by that, um, and that was the. I actually kind of like that move. He wasn't drawn by it. He was drawn by something different. Somebody killed Uncle Ben. He hadn't had no idea who he was. The only evidence he had was a tattoo, and uh, he's looking all over for this person. Eventually, you see the transformation from him just wearing a hood to him actually wearing a mask because when he went out there the first time um, the enemy when he crashed into the uh, to the ring the enemy shout out I seen your face I know what you look like and that pretty much prompted him he better wear a disguise which um, you see he didn't wear too much of a disguise but he actually got inspiration got ideas and that prompted the Spider-Man outfit in fact he didn't even call himself Spider-Man until after that rescue from the bridge um, those are the kind of things I actually like I actually like the change the action is in the middle. Um, some of the stuff I actually thought was impressive. I was entertained by it. But there was other stuff I didn't really care for. Um, the ending action sequence 
uh, was predictable. You pretty much knew how this all going to pan out, uh, if, especially if you've already seen other Spider-Man movies. Um, it is pretty much where a lot of people said they've been there, done that, show me something new. Uh, but in any case, it, it was it was not, gr to me, it wasn't um, great for me, but at least it was enough to keep me, um, you know, okay, this is fun, I can still watch this. The real gripe comes... Um, with the chemistry with the two actors, um, um, Gwen Stacy and Peter Parker. I'm just going to tell you right now, I did not dig this Peter Parker at all. I did not like how they betrayed Peter Parker in this movie. Um, he was more creepy um, than I actually want him to be, and they try, they try to make it as a joke in many cases. But I, I didn't really quite, uh, I didn't really quite dig it. Um, I know a lot of people poke fun of him twitching when, when he got his powers and he would control his powers, but that didn't bother me as much as his interaction towards Gwen Stacy, his interaction towards everybody else, how he was being a jerk to everybody else. And I, I, I'll be honest with you, I know Spider-Man threw some white cracks um, at times, but in this one, it, it really felt way out of place in many cases. Um, I didn't really feel that it, it done any justice. And if you want to talk about continuity errors, uh, when the cop shot was took a shot of him, he was just dodging um, the bullets, just um, turning his head, going left and right. I'm looking at the at the bullets and where it's going, and I said I'm pretty sure that cop killed that man. He had um, glued to the wall because there was no other way those bullets went anywhere. That guy wasn't going anywhere. That guy got shot off. He's dead. But they never really addressed that issue. That's fine. Um, but in any case, I didn't like the chemistry. I didn't like the way um, those two actors interact with each other. I was never convinced there was an item at all. I was never convinced that they were uh, meant to be together. Um, I wasn't even convinced that they was. And then forget about the fact that they um, they were trying to portray themselves as teenagers uh, in their um, late teens. So I believe Chris Stacy uh, mentioned her age in the movie. She was 17. I think Peter Parker is pretty much the same age, or at least one year or uh, um, younger, or one year older than her. Who knows? But the point was, I sat there in this movie and said, are you really serious? you want me to sit there and take this, um, their teenagers in high school bit um, seriously? I, I just didn't buy into that. I didn't buy into it at all. Uh, but I didn't, didn't buy into any relationship. It felt so forced uh, that I actually was debating whether or not I actually want to have a list, my top five list of forced relationships. Um, but this didn't feel too good. This didn't feel right at all. Um, but the one that I think they dropped the ball the most, and I'm going to just throw it out there, was the betrayal of the lizard. Um, and that's largely because, A, I didn't like the CGI one bit. When Jeremy Johns um, did um, his reveal of what the lizard may look like, uh, the first thing I said to myself, I said, please, Jeremy Johns, tell me that's not the picture. Please tell me that's not what he's going to look like. And when I finally saw the movie, I was like, damn. This looks stupid. <laughs> I mean, it looks stupid. Maybe it's my fault. Maybe because I am so used to seeing the um, the cartoon version of the lizard, uh, seeing him like that, seeing him even having uh, a talking like the way he was, uh, threw me off guard, threw me for a loop. So I really wasn't um, digging the uh, the changes they did on that. Also, there was really I never really convinced. I was never really convinced that uh, that the doctor and Peter Parker. Uh, was actually, you know, was tight. They was not, you know, they was not close, good, close friends. Um, Peter you know, Parker's dad and his parents probably was close to him, but in terms of Peter uh, and uh, the doctor himself, I didn't see it. I did not see it at all. And that was pretty much that I, I was sorely missed um, with this film. I, I may go, I'm going to go to Spider-Man trilogy territory here, and I'm going to explain why I felt if they was going to do a Spider-Man 4, they should do the Lizard with those two um, actors. When Spider-Man 2 was, when he, when that professor was introduced, there was already building a relationship between the two um, characters. And that relationship was really, um, was further explored in Spider-Man 3. The one thing I, I actually liked um, that they did right was that when it was a situation um, that uh, may be a um, little bit out of Peter Parker's reach, because Peter Parker is a genius. Let's, let's, get, uh, get, let's get that clear out of the way. He's very smart. Um, he just has, you know, tough luck. He went to uh, the doctor. He went to him for further advice. Um, they showed that in the cartoon. They even showed it in the book. And there was a growing relationship. There's a bond. Um, so when Spider-Man is facing the lizard, he knows there's something more at stake. Um, he has to stop the lizard, but at the same time, he had to save um, the, the doctor, who was actually close friends with him, that actually have helped him in many occasions. And I never got that with this, uh, with this, with this movie. I never got that with this character. Um, if anything, I felt... Um, 
Dr. Connors was just using this person. He was using him uh, to uh, to further his experiment because, as you know, he has one arm and uh, there's a low self-esteem issue here. And although they played the low self-esteem issue pretty good, I felt the relationship as a whole between him and Peter Parker was not um, well um, rounded as it should have been. If it had been more well rounded, I would have been more convinced that Peter Parker wanted to help the doctor in any which way he can because the doctor, as he said, he's not himself, he's not thinking properly. And that would be because of the side effect of the uh, of this experiment they was doing and how even though uh, it worked at a time, it did came at a price. I, I was very, very um, disappointed in that. I was very, very disappointed in that. I was just very disappointed in how they went with um, this film. And I'm going to say right now, this is one at one time I think that um, Hollywood should have done more campiness with the Spider-Man movie um, than go with the Dark Knight's um, route. Um, um, you're seeing it a lot more, and a lot of people are starting to realize that some of the movies may not work well with others. I know a lot of people uh, were surprised that I liked it, Superman, uh, The Man of Steel. I, I, but there was a reason. I thought that I, I see where they was doing way ahead of time, and when I saw the film, I said, yeah, this is what that comic book uh, they're basing it on. And I was not shocked. I was not surprised, but I felt there was more of a personal journey that, I'm going to be honest with you, it's not pleasant. Um, Spider-Man's journey is not pleasant either, but there's also a sense of Spider-Man that you have to have a balance. You have to have that campiness um, um, to, to even things out. And this one really didn't have it, um, especially with the way they was trying to portray it. They said it was more grittier. Honestly, I just felt it was just uh, uninteresting. Um, in many ways. Um, I could not relate to this character. Um, surprisingly, I can actually relate to Tommy Osgarnes on, on Spider-Man character uh, more so, especially with 2. I think 2 was the best Spider-Man film that was ever made. Um, and I don't care what anybody would say that they all oh, Ramney ruined the franchise. Nobody wasn't saying that when Spider-Man 2 came out. It was perfect. You had a great story. They balanced it out perfectly. You had great actors um, acting it out. Mania was the perfect villain at that time. And I thought that, uh, for the most part, you had a film that had a good beginning, good ending, and a good continuation, which led to the third one. Now, we can debate about the third one all we want. I'm, I'm, always, I'm more than recognized the flaws that that film had, but I still enjoyed it for what it, what it was worth. I think this film, there was no enjoyment with this film. I didn't enjoy it as much as I wanted to. Um, that pretty much, <laughs> it pretty much it surprised me because I, I seen the film, something like this should have be more enjoyable for me, but it just wasn't. Um, especially how they ended it with him and Gwen Stacy in the classroom. And I think everybody pointed that ending out. Um, and people just say he's just being a, being a jackass now. He's just being a jerk because there's no way. Because he made a promise. Now you see he's breaking that promise. Um, so basically his word means nothing. And I, and I have a different reason why I have a, a big problem with that. But at least one thing it did right. And it actually got me still pumped up for the Amazing Spider-Man 2. Especially how Electro is going to be betrayed here. Because I did see the pictures. And I must say, I'm impressed. I, I like the way Spider-Man and Electro were facing each other. Uh, that picture was shown a couple times. Um, I like the, um, the design of Electro. Um, I think Jamie Foxx would be just fine as Electro. I have no problem with that. Uh, but I like the way they set it up. But it leaves a lot of questions. Uh, who was this guy who mysteriously showed up in, um, in the doctor's cell? Um, the doctor saying, keep your hands off him. And they asked him if he uh, told him about his parents. He said, no, good, we'll just leave him alone for now. And he just disappeared. So it brings, it builds up to a sequel, which you know is going to happen. You know it's going to go down. You know um, they, they're going to make it. Um, so, so I'm actually happy for that. I'm actually happy that they are um, putting the blueprint for Spider-Man 2. Whether or not this will be a blueprint for the Avengers, I do not know. I'm not going to say yes, but I know a lot of people saying he, it may be possible that Spider-Man may actually show up in Avengers at one point or another. Um, I'm just saying, let's wait and see. Tony Tom will tell. But to me, at least they have uh, room for improvement. To, it, it's just pretty much the chemistry, guys. The chemistry, uh, the CGI of that of the lizard. Oh, my God, I hated that lizard. I really did. I, people complain about the Green Goblin in the first film. This was just... just Oh, man, CGI. I think they're relying it way too much to make their effects. I'd rather have a guy in a rubber costume than that. I'm being real. I'd rather have that. This, this was, that, was, that was poorly done, in my opinion. Um, and, it's, and it was just underwhelming to me. Um, the story, I don't, I liked some of the stuff they changed. 
it was predictable, man. It was really, really predictable to me, and it didn't help by the fact is I did not convince, it, no, nothing convinced me that uh, Gwen Stacy and Peter Parker had to hide from each other. I, I just felt it was the were mass was forced. Um, not to say the actors was bad. I think the actors did a fairly decent job of what they was working with. I just didn't felt any kind of um, favorite. In other words, it, this may not be my Spider-Man. It may be everybody else's Spider-Man. That's fine. But this was not the kind of Spider-Man I came into to see the film. I will actually miss some of the fun campiness that made Spider-Man 1, 2, and yeah, even 3 so enjoyable. But um, apparently they want to go with a more serious route. Um, all I got to say is maybe 2 will surprise me. I'm, I'm only hoping. On a scale of 1 to 4, I gave it 2 stars. Um, it, it had two great moments, but it also had some moments I didn't care for. That's just how I'm being true. I, I, I'm not going to sit here and try and raise the bar up any higher than what it is. Keep in mind, I saw this on more than one occasion just to give it a fair, honest review, and um, that's my feeling on that. Um, so you may trash me all you want, be my guest, but I'm, I got to keep it real. Um, I wouldn't, I, I shouldn't be making videos if I have to lie about something about a, a film that I saw. But this is my feeling on it. It's okay. I mean, for most fans who like Spider-Man and just want to see him on the screen, Go ahead and see it. Um, rent it out on video. Um, it's definitely something that um, is worth seeing one time. To me, I seen it. Didn't really care for it, but maybe two will pretty much um, um, pretty much change my mind um, in terms of how this series is going to be going. Um, there's already a lot of problems with it, but there are also some moves that I think they did right. Um, I did see it filmed just a few blocks from my neighborhood, so uh, let's see what's going on. I'm waiting for the trailer, and uh, until then. <laughs> I'm only crossing my fingers. So that's my um, review of um, Made in Spider-Man, more to come. Um, this is, again, this is not a flashback review. These are reviews I have yet to actually review. I am going to review the next one, which is The Habit. But until then, this is J77 saying take care, be safe. I will talk to you soon.